All right, the first thing what we're going to talk about is something called global styles. So let's go back to my code editor right here. Now, so what are global styles? So in my app and then UI, there is a global.css file. We can use this file to add CSS rules to all the routes in our application, such as CSS reset rules, side-wide styles for HTML elements like links and more. So basically, global CSS is going to have all the styles that you want to apply for all of your applications. So if you have worked with React, you know that React styles are not scoped to one component. The styles are actually going to affect all of your application. Next.js gives you an option modularity with your CSS style. So you can actually apply a CSS style to a single component instead of like everything. Definitely need both, right? So we are talking about global CSS right now that's going to affect all of your application. So we can import this global CSS in any component we want. Okay, but because these styles are going to affect pretty much all of our application, we are going to import this CSS to the top level component. And in our next JS application, the top level component or known as the root layout. Let's take a look. This is the layout. And you see that there is a function called export default function. And the name of the function is root layout. It takes children, which is children, a re react dot react node. These children could be a component. And because it's a TypeScript file, we have to provide what type it is. It's a react or react node. And then we are putting an HTML, which is a language English. You can add other language if you want. And then body. And here we are rendering the children's and it could be components. So it makes sense to actually import our global styles in this root layout. So it affects pretty much everything in our application. So what we're going to do, we're going to say import. And we're going to have, so this at symbol is also something that Next.js provide us. So we're going to say at slash app slash we have VS Code is helping me. In this case, we're going to do UI. And inside the UI, just write this one, uh, global.css. So... Command S to save and Control S to save. And let's go back to our application here. So let's take a look. It is saying, so Next.js, just like React, gives you error messages if something goes wrong. So here it's telling me that this module not found can't resolve. So something I have done that it cannot actually found this one. So let's go ahead and take a look. What did I do? So I guess I misspelled it. So Control save it again. Let's go back to this one and now take a look at this. It has now some styles, all right? But here's the thing. If you go back to our global CSS, we haven't really written any styles. It is already given to us and that is coming from this Tailwind. So Tailwind has this base components and utilities that we can actually use. Now let's talk about Tailwind a little bit. So Tailwind is a CSS framework that speeds up the development process by allowing you to quickly write utility classes directly in your TSX markup. In Tailwind, we style elements by adding class names. Let me give you an example here. Let me give you this page here. So let's go ahead and add an h1 text. Hello here. Save this. There you go. Let's take a look at this. Hello here. Let's go back to this. Well, what you have to do is create a class name and then you say text dash blue dash 500. If you hover this one, it's actually going to tell you what this class actually does. You can see that it, it created a class text dash blue dash 500, which basically has an opacity one and the color of RGB is some sort of blue color. You can also see this one. I added an extension for Tailwind. Let me take a look here. These are all my extensions. So there is a Tailwind extension. There you go. Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. So that's the one that actually gives me, allows me to take a look at what are the classes are. If I do like text, it gives me IntelliSense with the text, what are the classes available, okay? So that's how we write our Tailwind classes. So let's go back to the application here now you can see that it is blue all right now it's important to know that 
Although CSS styles share globally, each class is singularly applied to each element. This means if you add or delete an element, you don't have to worry about maintaining separate style sheets, styles, collisions, or the size of your CSS bundle growing as your application scales. So when we use create next app to start a new project next.js will ask us if we want to use tailwind if we select yes next.js will automatically install the necessary packages and configure tailwind in our application now let me go to this one and we are already in app and page.tsx so here what we're going to do uh we're going to take a look at this classes these are all tailwind classes so if i hover over this is what you see that flex is basically saying display flex mean dash age screen is adding a mean height of 100 view height so the corresponds all the classes correspond to css styles so right underneath the p element i'm going to go ahead and paste this div now this is just a div okay it has a class name it has an age zero basically saying that height will be zero pixel width will be zero pixel and it has border dash b so border dash b is basically border bottom and it has a width and everything in that square bracket 30 pixel is actually dynamic same thing with border left width border right width you get the gist of it so let's save this now let's go back to our application let's take a look this is this triangle is the logo of Vercel company because that's where the, this tutorial is coming from. So this is what you get for using Tailwind. You just add your class names. All right, so let's talk about now, what if you don't want to use Tailwind? Let's talk about CSS modules, okay? Now CSS modules allows you to scope CSS to a component by automatically creating unique class names. So you don't have to worry about style collisions as well. So we'll continue using Tailwind in this course, but let's take a moment to see how you can achieve the same results using CSS modules. Let's go back to our UI folder. And inside the UI folder, I'm going to go ahead and create file. I'm going to call this home. The reason this is a convention, the reason I want to say it's home because it is regarding the home page. So I'm going to say home dot, and then I'm going to mention that this is going to be a module. Okay, so this is what we have to create the file name as a module to say that, hey, create a unique class name for this one. So home dot module the CSS. For here, we are just going to create class called shape. This is just regular CSS. So dot shape is going to have a height of zero, is going to have a width of zero, is going to have a border bottom of 30 pixel, is going to have a solid black, and is going to have a border left, and uh, that's going to be 20 pixel. So it's going to be solid, and it's going to be transparent. We're going to use a border right. Go ahead and take a look at here. There you go. And same thing, 20 pixel, solid, and transparent. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's go to the page.tsx. This is where we want to add this one. And I'm here going to simply import. And the convention is that we import and put this in a variable. So it's going to be acting as like a JavaScript object. So all the styles are going to be available as a property value for that object styles here. So I'm going to import styles, create, creating a styles variable, putting everything in there. And then I'm going to say from, um, it's going to be from app, it's going to be from UI. And uh, we want to use the home.module.css. Save this, okay? And let's go back to this uh, div that we created for the triangle logo we are going to go ahead and delete all the class names and here we are going to open curly base because this is a javascript styles and here we can add the class name so let's save it let's go ahead and take a look refresh the page you can see that the same exact triangle still remains now before we jump into our different topic I want to talk to you about a library called CLSX library. In fact, let's go to our package.json. And as you can see here, we have the library installed, CLSX. So CLSX is a library that lets you toggle class names easily. So you can go ahead and take a look at the documentation 
uh, for more detail. But what DLSX does is that there may be cases where you may need to conditionally style an element based on state or some other conditions. For example, we have an invoice status, right? The status can be pending or a paid. Now, if it's paid, we want a color to be green. If it's pending, we want the color to be gray. So that's some conditional styling. And we can achieve this easily with this package. Let's go back to UI. And then here we are going to go to the invoices and the invoices we're going to go to status as here you can see that we already imported the clsx from clsx package and that's good okay so whatever whichever element you want to add your styles to you're just going to add a class name you are going to open the curly braces and then you write your condition right there in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to write it from scratch so that you can understand how this whole thing works okay so here's an element we have a status, triple equals pending, so this is basically a boolean. So if it's pending, it's going to return this or null. And if it's paid, then it's going to return this or null. Okay? Now here, we want to change the style of the span. We want to change the colors. And uh, we are going to use a class name. And here, instead of a double code, we are going to utilize the curly brace because this is a JavaScript function. We are going to utilize the CLSX that we just imported from the package. This is a function, open up the brackets here, and it's going to take a couple of arguments. The first argument is going to be a string, and this is the string is going to have all default style. We want to say that it's going to have inline flex. We want to say that it's going to have an item center. It's we want to say it's going to be rounded full. And then let's do px uh, one for this one, and then let's do py one for this one, and then text small for this one so this is going to be the first argument next argument is going to take an object okay and this particular object is going to take a key value so your key is going to be your uh, css that you want so you're going to say bg dash gray dash 100 okay i want the, and then also text dash gray we want 500 and this is a javascript object so i'm going to say colon and i'm going to put status is equals to pending comma all right so this is going to result in a boolean so if status is triple equals to pending if that's true then render this class copy this and change this for different value here we are going to uh, do its green and let's do 500 and then let's just do this instead of gray we're going to just simply do white if it's paid so here that's how you write your conditional style so at this particular point this is all to know about styles and something else is that except for tailwind except for writing your raw css you can also use sass so all you have to do is change the css to scss that's it, and then add SAS dependency to your project. You can also use CSS and JS libraries such as styles, JSX, style component, and emotion. All right, so that's our styling. Let's talk about optimizing fonts and images.